Meet Prince Charming. He's just been left with a broken heart after an attack from the evil witch coronary heart disease. He's on the mend, but can never be cured, as he's been left with the curse of a lifelong condition that makes him four times more likely to have another attack or even die from the disease. But there is hope for our hero, a treatment which research shows can not only reduce this risk, but also improve his quality of life and mental health, while being safe and relatively inexpensive. It's no magic spell or potion. He'll learn how to use exercise and other techniques in the long-term management of his condition. But here's the catch. There's no fairy tale ending. In reality, the chance he'll actually receive this treatment is somewhere between 10 and 30%. Isn't that just so frustrating? For all of us working in the field of cardiac rehabilitation, this is the reality we are confronted with on a daily basis. And it's a drive to change this reality. That's the focus of my research. You see, Simply knowing something works isn't enough, as oftentimes this information gets lost in translation, leaving us with gaps between what we know to work best and what actually happens in everyday practice. Treatments are underused or misused, and like cardiac rehabilitation, we fail to reap their full potential. But if we could understand the nature of these gaps and close them, improve the use of treatments we already know to work, just imagine the gains we could make Gains that I'm hoping to make by using techniques to synthesize and analyze all the existing cardiac rehab research and use these findings to address some of the reasons for the current gap. I've also just documented for the first time the exact type and nature of services we do offer in practice to establish just how big this gap really is. So far I've found little flexibility for individual patients and too great a reliance on traditional generic models of care. And now all of this has left cardiac rehabilitation a bit like Cinderella, unattractive, underfunded, undervalued, and constantly in the shadow of her two flashy but ugly stepsisters, surgery and pharmacology. So the question is, how do we get Cinderella to the ball? Well, she needs a fairy godmother to make her more attractive and more appealing. And that, that's my job. If I can use the research to determine the most crucial parts of the exercise program, I could use this knowledge to create innovative and flexible models of care which could be tailored to the individual. Just imagine how much more likely someone would be to not only start but stick with a program that worked and had been designed specifically to meet their needs. By doing this, I hope to increase the availability, uptake and effectiveness of cardiac rehab in the future. In other words, getting Cinderella dressed up into the ball well, hopefully she can meet Prince Charming and have a shot at happily ever after.